Welcome back to Real Estate 101. Today we're gonna to continue our discussion on home inspections and talk a little bit about private water supplies and water quality. And I'm pleased to be joined by Alan Spizak of Akis Home Inspections. Alan, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Joe. It's great to be here again. And again, I've brought back to join us today, Jason Barry of ESSE Canada, and he is the manager of property services. Jason, welcome to the show. Thanks guys, it's great to be back. All right, Jason, so I guess I'll start with you. Um, what are the different types of water supplies you'll normally encounter on a rural property? There are two main types of supplies. There's either going to be a, a well supply or a cistern supply. So saying that in wells, there are three main types of wells you might see on a rural property. The most common is a drilled well, which is typically a five to six inch steel casing that's drilled down into the uh, soil. They can range anywhere from 20 to 30 feet deep in a shallow water supply, all the way up to three or 400 feet deep in a deeper uh, aquifer, underlying aquifer. So these are generally the most uh, secure types of supplies because the water that gets into them has to be filtered down through the, the layers of sediment and soil, rock, uh, sometimes months, years it takes from water to get from the surface down into those supplies. So, really? Yeah, that's right. So um, we're talking you know, uh, a lot of filtration, a lot of uh, bacteria removal and pollutant removal by the time it gets down there. Uh, the second most common type that you see around Ontario is called a dug or a board well. They're usually larger diameter, shallower wells, 36 inches in diameter, maybe no more usually than 50 feet deep. And they're shallower because they're constructed using either an excavator or a boring rig, which can't go that deep into the ground. The water quality of these types of supplies are a little more vulnerable to contaminants as they're shallower and they have less filtration capacity uh, as you go down through that soil before it gets into the well. The third type, which you only see on specific soils in Ontario, is called a point well or some call it a sand point well. It's normally a, a two inch steel screened uh, pipe that gets driven down into soils that are very, very sandy and, and have a high water table, so usually 15 to 25 feet in depth. Although the sand acts as a good filter to remove bacteria, it, they're not considered secure as the shallow depth can allow for bacteria or other pollutants to migrate through that sand and collect in that well. The last type of, of water supply um, that you see on lakefront or cottage properties is sometimes a direct intake right in that source, so pulling directly from a lake or a river. And needless to say, if you have that type of supply, you're bound to have some type of bacterial Bacteria. contamination. Right. That's right. Yeah. So I would strongly advise uh, disinfection equipment in that case. So Jay, a kiss is now going out to do cottage inspections because it's summertime and we've got special clients that want us to go up north. So what is your geographic area? Well, we cover uh, a good portion of the near north and even upper reaches of, you know, Sudbury, North Bay area. So uh, it, it ranges, you know, uh, no issue getting to getting to those kind of remote areas. So you, go, you guys go up there. Yeah, we, we travel, put a lot of miles on the vehicles, wow. but, uh, you know, there's a lot of rural properties out there and a lot of opportunity. As well as commercial work. Absolutely, yeah, commercial work as well, because uh, as you get further north away from the big cities, a lot of, uh, you know, commercial... Uh, establishments also get their get their water from private well supplies or, or lake intakes. Such as trailer parks and um, restaurants and exactly. other facilities. You got it. All right, so let's go back and touch on something that you mentioned about water wells that go directly to the lake. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance they're going to get bacteria, obviously makes sense. So what types of disinfection systems are available to help homeowners uh, on the residential side that, that have wells like that? There's a variety of uh, uh, treatment options out there, and I'll run through a couple of them. Uh, historically, water's been treated uh, with chlorine and hydrogen peroxide and, and those types of chemicals. Uh, with those types of systems, you usually need a large storage tank uh, in the basement or in, in a shed on the, on the property to allow the 
uh, chemical to react with the water and treat it before it goes forward to the rest of the home. Uh, this kind of this requires the homeowner to constantly monitor the amount of chemical in in uh, the container as well as the the chemical pump. So a bit of maintenance is involved. Right. Yeah, a more common and and uh, or popular and less uh, fairly inexpensive system is an ultraviolet light unit, which uh, I see a lot on inspection these days. It consists of a an ultraviolet lamp which sits inside of a casing and is preceded by some type of 5 micron sediment filter cartridge. So the good thing about these units is that there are no chemicals involved and a little bit of maintenance as the lamp and the filter need to be replaced at least on an annual basis. All right, so what about the ozone treatment? I've heard that that's also something people use. That's right. That's one of the newer and, in my opinion, most effective ways of treating water. Um, before, ozone used to only be used as uh, in municipal, larger scale municipal plants because ozone is generated through electricity and it was very energy intensive and expensive to produce. But technology over the last few years has been developed so they've been able to scale it down into a uh, into a sized unit that is at a price point that's more affordable to the private homeowner because ozone is such a strong and powerful oxidant sometimes it, it can take the place of say an iron uh, removal system or a sulfur removal system um, so it serves kind of multiple purposes as well as provide providing really reliable disinfection so a lot of these systems have water softeners i see them as i do home inspections so Tell us a little bit about water softeners and also about how each system should be in line with the next system. Sure, that's a, that's a good point, Alan. A lot of homes do have water softeners where the water is hard enough or contains enough calcium or magnesium to, to justify their installation. Uh, the majority of both drilled and some dug wells typically require the use of a softener. What the softener does is it uses uh, or replaces calcium and magnesium with a softer mineral which is created in a brine tank with salt uh, sodium mineral so you take the hardness minerals that produce a scale which can kind of gum up your fixtures or, or pipes with the softer mineral salt uh, essentially that uh, that allows uh, you know free flow of water and uh, easier conditions to shower in and wash dishes and whatnot so um, if we have treatment or disinfection systems like ultraviolet lights or other types of systems we spoke about, um, the softener usually is installed prior or upstream to those units because you want to soften the water before it goes through the disinfection system. So on a general kind of uh, schematic, you would have a the well, the well pump, a pressure tank, a water softener, then follow it up with a sediment filter, and some type of disinfection unit, whether it be uh, ozone, UV, uh, or uh, peroxide. All right, Jason, so you touched on the importance of doing regular maintenance. How often should homeowners perform an inspection for bacteria? The Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care recommends that private water supply owners test their water a minimum of three times per year to ensure the bacterial safety of that water. Oftentimes the local health unit does this or performs this analysis for free. Now if the result comes back positive for bacteria then it's a good indication that uh, any treatment system that is in place may not be functioning effectively and will require some maintenance or that if there's no treatment system it would be certainly a good idea to look into uh, putting one in. Okay so here's another question for you. What happens in the case in a rural property where homeowners don't have access to a reliable water supply. What do they do? The most common way to get around that if the owner has either a very low yielding well supply or no water at all is to put in a, a water storage tank which we call a, a cistern. These tanks can be either plastic or concrete and can be filled in a number of ways. You can either take that low yielding supply and fill the the cistern with the, the well water. You can have uh, the downspouts from the eaves, troughs, and roof collect rainwater to fill the cistern, or you can have uh, a transported water delivered to fill that cistern, or any combination of all three of those if, if they're available. So when we're out doing home inspections, I know that your company, ESSC Canada, is also out there doing the water 
inspection. And I have a concern because I know that some people selling their home will cheat by putting bleach or chlorine into the water system to kill that bacteria. So how do you deal with that type of uh, situation, Jay? Before we collect a bacterial water sample, we have a, a meter that measures or tests for chlorine so that I can let the potential buyer know that when this sample was collected, there was chlorine in that water source and that it may not be truly representative Pure. of exactly of that, uh, of that well supply or cistern supply. So it's just, it will likely come back negative for bacteria, uh, but the person buying the house then knows that, okay, this was, we should either uh, collect another sample when there's no chlorine or strongly look into installing some disinfection equipment uh, to protect against, you know, any uh, bacteria uh, that may occur in the supply in the future. So if the people are going to take the water sample to the health unit for testing, is that something the health unit would check for? The health unit, I can't uh, say for all units if they do that, but typically I know it's something that should be te uh, checked on site at the time the sample is being collected because Usually there's a chemical in most bacterial bottles that neutralizes any chlorine in the water to prevent getting a, a false uh, sample at the lab. So it's not something that the lab would necessarily be able to check for. So in your opinion, a buyer would be better off to have you as an independent come out to take the water test. That's right. I think it's best for all parties to have a third party uh, take that water sample and then you know that there's no tampering exactly. or there's no, uh, you know, there's no... Um, you know, influence on that sample. All right. So let's go back to cisterns mm -hmm. for homeowners that are using cisterns as their water supply. Do those need disinfection too? I would strongly suggest that. Um, even if the cisterns filled with high quality bacteria free well water, or if it's tr previously treated transported water from a truck, sitting in a large tank over a period of time, the water can stagnate and bacterial regrowth can occur. Um, uh, kind of goes without saying, if it's collected from a roof uh, supply, the runoff on that roof could encounter or pick up many, a lot of bacteria and get into the cistern. So even as a redundancy or a multi-barrier right. step, I strongly advise uh, to play it safe. Exactly. And then you don't have to be concerned if you're you know, drinking or showering or cooking. All right. So is there much maintenance involved uh, with cistern supplies? I would say on the whole, there's not a ton of maintenance involved with the cistern supply. Um, a few of the considerations or suggestions that I would have to anyone using a cistern would be to install some type of low level alarm or monitor that would notify the homeowner when uh, the water is, is getting low and uh, they could make the appropriate arrangements to, to arrange for a new load of water to come in. Um, and how often is that? Do you know, It varies on the size of the cistern and the use in the house. Right. So, I mean... Uh, you got a big cistern and you use it a lot and if you got a small cistern yeah same difference same difference so right. i mean it could be anywhere from usually on the whole every couple of months is uh, if the cistern is a decent size we're talking you know four or five thousand gallon uh typical household would probably need to get that replenished uh, every you know 90 days to, right. to a couple months um the other consideration if the cistern shares a wall say with uh, the home or the basement of the home or as an older tank that may be prone to leaks, I would consider or strongly advise uh, installing a, some type of food grade vinyl liner inside the cistern. It helps keep the water In. inside where it should be. And it also promotes uh, or it makes it easier to clean that cistern, uh, which should be done, you know, every couple of years uh, just to, to keep things uh, sanitary. So you've just identified uh, a water alarm system, a uh, liner for cistern, can you go through what you do during your water inspection at a home and some of the problems you run into, solutions and approximate costs? Sure. Um, first off, when we identify what type of water supply is on the property, whether it be a drilled well, dug well, cistern, um, I want to evaluate kind of the construction of that source or the conditions around that wellhead or cistern access. Just you want to have it so that any rainwater or uh, uh, surface water isn't directed towards that well. You want to have good grading around the, the access so that it can flow away from that well and not have the potential to migrate into that supply, contaminating it. Um, while we're on site, I'm also having a look at the pump and the pressure system to make sure it's running efficiently. Pumps 
generally last between 10 and 20 years in some cases, but uh, you want to stay a step ahead of the game with your pump or your pressure system to make sure that it doesn't, you know, go wonky on you. And usually Murphy's Law dictates that that's, you know, at a family reunion or Christmas yep. time, something like that. So those are the things we want to identify is age and condition of the mechanical components at the time of our inspection. A new pump may, could vary uh, between, you know, $500 and $1,500. Pressure tanks, several hundred dollars. Uh, uh, they come in various sizes, but usually a few hundred dollars could could uh, take care of replacing something like that. And what about a flow test? So a flow test is also something we do. Now, it's not a true well recovery test, which has to be done by a licensed well technician, where they would actually pull the pump out of the well and put their own equipment in. What we do is we'll run the water for a period of time at various taps, measuring the flow rate, and also do a file search on the well records that are available around that property to see what average depth of wells and average or recommended suggested pumping rates of those wells to give the new buyer an idea of the sustainability of that supply and whether it's going to be able to support their their use of, of the home. So by the sounds of things, you do a very, very thorough inspection, something that just uh, a normal plumber wouldn't do. Uh, yeah, maybe some things that uh, some buyers would take for granted that uh, we're so used to most people coming from the city. You turn on the tap, you have water, water. you don't think about where it comes from, whereas in a private supply, it's that supply is on your property and you have control over that source and the mechanisms that it gets from the ground into your house. So. Well, you have control, but you're also responsible. For Absolutely. Well, right? That's a great point. Yeah. All right, Jason. So for viewers and listeners that are watching our show that uh, you know may need some guidance and some help, how do they get in contact with you? You can call our main phone line at 1-866-356-3773 or visit us at our website at www.essecanada.com. Okay, great. And Alan, how do, uh, how do viewers get in contact with you? On our website, www.aciss.ca or call our head office at 905-633-8219 and you can call us seven days a week, 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. Perfect, Alan. Great stuff. I want to thank you for coming on today's show. Thanks again, Joe. Jason, thanks for coming on. Hope to have you again sometime down the road. Thank you so much. Great to see you. So there you have it. If you're looking for a top home inspector, get in contact with Alan Spizak of ACUS Home Inspections. For more information on water and water systems, get in contact with Jason Berry of ESSE Canada. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, comment, and share our videos. I'm Joe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.